I, I've mentioned before that I have an extreme amount of student loan debt, like six figures. A small part of that is federal, while the overwhelming majority are private loans. That debt was stacked up due to me attending Georgia Tech as an out-of-state Floridian. My fault, I know. I had to escape Orlando. And anyone from there will understand what I mean by that immediately. I also just love being around a city that's this alive. Plus, it's basically the black mecca. None of those things would save me from the foolish decisions you make when you're a young adult. I got loans for walking around money on top of covering tuition, room and board, and books, which had me in the 35K range each year. If I had the chance to do it all again, I wouldn't, to be honest with you. I don't miss college. It was not my peak. Now that I'm 12 years removed from my college graduation, my perspective has obviously matured. I'm paying the federal loans down aggressively, and the private loans fell off my credit report, so we'll get to those at some point. I'm not here to complain about mine, though. This video exists to update y'all on what's happening on the policy side of things for those who are still dealing with that burden. Let's get into it. As of October of last year, the current administration canceled $127 billion in student loan debt, which is the most of any administration. These are just the facts. That represented 3.5 million borrowers being able to breathe easier, plus a huge boost to the economy. People spend more on homes, businesses, and products when they don't have to sweat about those emails and letters from loan servicers. How did the administration achieve that? This is the best part, but this shit is also annoying they enforce policies that were already on the books. There's four different ways to get federal loans forgiven, which I didn't actually know. I thought it was two at best. We've had income-based repayment plans since 1994, but loan servicers weren't proactively tracking those qualifying payments. The administration had to look into those accounts and evaluate which ones qualified to get that debt wiped, which took $42 billion off the board. Wow, right? Incompetence caused that problem in the first place and basic verification cleared enough money to change a lot of lives. I was always in the weird in-between place in my early corporate jobs where I qualified for income-based repayment, but still couldn't afford to throw out $300 to $400 every month. That's food money. It didn't make sense at the time for me to basically starve myself to pay down a total that I couldn't even fathom. I am supposed to eat chicken noodle soup for 30 years to get out from under this debt? The hell you think this is? Another one. A lot of y'all have probably heard of the government's public service loan forgiveness program. Quick summary. Nonprofit, public, and governmental employees have the option to get their loans canceled if they make on-time payments for 10 years. Seems arbitrary to me, but whatever. The problem with this program was the same as the first one. Incompetence. Servicers provided incorrect info about the qualifications and millions of borrowers were paying that down for nothing. Imagine you sacrifice going out with friends, vacations, and ate clam chowder for half the week to get those payments in, and some loan rep on the phone is like, ah, our bad, fam. I'm not promoting cussing customer service reps out, but I also understand it. The administration took a look at these technicalities, broadened eligibility, and allowed people to reapply. This review resulted in 715,000 people having $51 billion erased. Another one, the Total and Permanent Disability Discharge Program. This is exactly what it sounds like. Debt relief for people with registered disability status through the Social Security Administration. If any of y'all watching this suffer from a mental or physical disability that's severe, permanent, and prevents you from clocking in, you just need proof from a doctor to wipe out that debt. The current administration knocked out $11.7 billion for 500,000 borrowers as of last October. This last one is particularly dope. Borrowers whose schools closed suddenly or were cheated by their colleges are eligible for the Borrower Defense Loan Discharge Program that wiped $22.5 billion for 1.3 million borrowers off the board. We'll drop info about all four of these discharge options in the description for anyone looking to get that ball rolling. So, have y'all heard of the SAVE plan? Most of my audience haven't been students in quite a while, so many don't have a reason to pay attention to this. SAVE is a new income-driven repayment, or IDR plan, enacted by the current administration to reduce monthly payments and accelerate student loan forgiveness for certain borrowers. 
is being challenged in certain scarlet colored states. So a federal appeals court put all those loans on forbearance while it gets figured out. That just means no payments are due and the interest isn't stacking up like it usually would. The feds say this period doesn't count towards your loan forgiveness, which is confusing because it overlaps with the forbearances that were already in place from other programs. The outcomes of the SAVE plan are similar to the ones I mentioned earlier. It would ideally help people pay less per month and cut down on the compounding interest that makes us feel like we're gonna die in debt. That was a lot. Let's talk about what can be done to address your specific situation with regard to your loans. I want this video to be a resource, not a complaint fest. I maintain a budget spreadsheet that lists out my revenue, expenses, and the principal loan amounts. I used to have a column to track the interest, but since I pay off my interest every month, it became unnecessary. Every federal loan provider allows you to pay your loan balance by group or all at once. The group represents individual loans. In my opinion, the most effective way to pay off loans is by attacking the ones with the largest interest rate in descending order, or largest to smallest. Sure, the large balances are intimidating, but if they have low interest rates, they'll grow slowly. Your primary objective is to ensure you're not spreading your budget too thin by paying that minimum loan balance every month. In November, we gotta vote for candidates to support expanded student debt forgiveness and affordable college for everybody. Make sure you're registered at vote.gov. When it comes to private loans, that's a topic for another day. Appreciate y'all watching. This is one of the shorter format videos I throw out sometimes in between episodes of Deep Dives. If y'all like this format, let me know. Um, I, I'm always experimenting with trying to deliver the message in a shorter way, a longer way. Um, but at the end of the day, this is a topic that's obviously very important to me and something that I felt like the my audience would benefit from hearing. And Ultimately, I'm just trying to give y'all resources to be able to take action on problems instead of just like talking about them all the time. That's always the goal. We're trying to like get to a point where every episode is not only engaging, but also helpful on some level. Anyway, I'm getting lit up. There's mosquitoes everywhere. I gotta go. Holla.